you know, you um, you advocate a lot, and I think you just alluded to this, man, for self-assessment and provide a lot of tools, recommendations in your book for self-assessment. Why, why is self-assessment so important to you? Again, man, because if you don't take the time to self-assess and be honest, you're, in my opinion, you're missing yeah. the mark, right? Yeah. You're, you're, because it, it's like, uh, and you, and you, you know, it's like a rocket taking off yeah. and being one or two degrees off. You can be just one or two degrees off and 10 years from now, you are a long way off from your destination, from where you thought you would be. Yeah. Because you kept getting up every day and allowing just that one or two percent of a degree that you thought you were hiding and burying and that nobody would notice that one or two percent over 10 years, 20 yeah. years, you look up and go, man, I'm nowhere near That's right. where I thought I would be. Right. And so it's important for us to really self-assess. Not most people don't have the courage mm. to self-assess. But if you're courageous enough to do it, you can self-assess with the intent of deliberately addressing and countering areas of opportunity and growth. Right. And so Absolutely. for me, self-assessment is important because I want to grow. I want to get to the next level. Absolutely. And I recognize I'm human, that I'm flawed like crazy and that the only way to really overcome my natural flaws and i say overcome some of them live with me you know like i, I walk with a limp for the rest right. for, for my entire life but the way i can essentially calibrate those flaws is man just being honest like yeah. again every day i wake up i deal with the reality that my dad wasn't in my life and that my mom and i had a difficult relationship because of the fact that they were teenagers, you know, they were 16 and both of them came from poverty and their yeah. parents won in their lives like that. So that's just a reality. So Anthony, always be in touch with that mm -hmm. reality that it doesn't take a lot to pull you back into that, that childhood trauma. If you're not in touch with it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If, if, you, if you're in touch with it, you can recognize it and you can navigate it. But if you try to bury it, it can creep up on you just like that. And you'll be making decisions and not even realizing why you're making these bad decisions. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, man. That's good. Man. That's good. That's good. I, I want to, I want to kind of start, you know, coming yeah. to close and I got two, two questions, man, that really, um, I think are going to be interesting, you know, instructive for people. You quote, you have to be narrow because if you try to be all things to all people, which, Lord knows, for <laughs> those of us who uh, are believers, we, we think about Paul. I, I became all things, all people, but yeah, not marketing. Okay. You have to be all things, all people. <laughs> you'll be up, you'll end up being nothing to no one. There are ways around this issue, but you have to carve out a niche for your concept, organization, or business, end quote. And I, you know, I'm thinking that you've experienced a lot of cases where this wasn't true for you to put it in the book. And so, man, say, 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 Say a couple things about observations, what you've observed and why this principle is so important, man, being, you know, niche oriented and how you approach, you know, promoting and selling your business. Yeah. So one of the single greatest, I, I would say it's in my, in the top three, when I work with clients, mm. it's, it's in the top three challenges of getting people to focus because mm. the world around us promotes, you know, you want to be gifted at everything, right? You want to be, you know, you want to be. I, I can do this and I can do this and I can do this and I can do this. And in reality, you and I both know masters like I don't want, you know, uh, uh, I don't want I want my surgeon to be the best surgeon, the most focused, lasered out surgeon that you can possibly imagine. Right. Yes. If, if you're doing brain surgery on me. I, yeah. I want to make sure that you are a master and that you have focused in on knowing the brain and precision of hands in a way that nobody else ar around me does. Right. And so in reality, if you think about it, it's masters become masters because they're deliberately focused and they yeah. practice lasering in. Now here's the irony. If LeBron James who mastered basketball said he was coming to your city and hosting a public forum on financial literacy, everybody was, it would be sold out. I, That's I said, right. everybody was sold out he would sell out the venue because he was a master at basketball. Now people will listen to him about anything. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right? right. And so That's the right. irony, right, is once you cut through the noise and become a master of something, all of a sudden people will honor 
you can have conversations on on things that maybe you're not even a master at, but people trust you because you have mastered something. That's right. That's right. And and I have seen that formula work over and over. When you become a master of something, oddly enough, it gives you the permission, if you will. The world around you gives you permission to then open up yourself to other marketable opportunities. 